Good morning, viewers, and very warm welcome to the twenty-first episode of Meet the Media Vatan series. Today, in the episode, we have someone who started his career in in the advertising industry, and later he executed the production of some of the cult films of Indian cinema. He now heads one of the most important film department of Ministry of Information Broadcasting, Government of India, Film Facilitation Office. Before presenting his detailed intro. May I first welcome Mr. Vikram Jit Roy, the head of Film Facilitation Office, Ministry of I N B T, I N B to the show. Rizwan Ji, thank you so much for having me here. What a pleasure and honor. Thank you. So thank much. you so much for joining us today. Such an honor having you on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, as I uh, mentioned in the beginning of the show, Mr. Vikram Jit Roy started his career in advertising at McKin Erickson and later joined Sony. picture entertainment in 1997 where he worked for more than a decade followed by a brief stint at mumbai mantra in 2010 he joined national film development corporation nfdc under ministry of inb government of india as the general manager at nfdc he was executive producer of some of the cult films of indian cinema almost in 11 indian languages including good road india submission to the 86 Academy Award, which is basically Oscar award as we know it, and Kissa Indo-German co-production Best Asian Film at the Toronto International Film Festival in 2014, Arunodaya among the 15 can't miss foreign language films at 2015 Tribeca International Film Festival, Chauthi Kud it was selected in Cannes Film Festival in 2015, Island City Best Debut Director at Venice Days in 2015, and much loved the Lunch Box. as the head of marketing a position he held simultaneously vikram jit played a key role in positioning of nfdc brands like cinemas of india film bazaar which is the asia's largest film market as well as guiding the corporations for into the ott space in 2016 vikram jit joined as head of the film facilitation office india's version of the film commission set up by ministry of inb in nfdc for creating a film friendly ecosystem in india with many unique initiatives undertaken especially with the launch of its web portal the ffo has delivered on its promise of establishing a comprehensive platform that informs as much as enriches the cinematic imagination of the country it is such an honor having mr vikram jit roy on the show today so without any delay may i request mr vikram jit to kindly deliver the talk on film as india as film destination Thank you, Rizwan Sab. Thank you for that very, very warm introduction and for so much of love. Thank you so much. Um, it's it's such an honor and a pleasure to be here to talk to you about a very interesting topic, uh, which is now gaining currency worldwide. Is that how filming locations have become such an important part of the filmic narrative? They always were a very important part of the of the narrative, uh, but now they have gained uh, this. Uh, the location integration into the screenplay or into the script or into the creative has gained enormous momentum has gained enormous uh, kind of uh, i would say uh, traction um, you have to understand that from an indian point of view uh, we are a land of stories you know we we tell from ages we've been telling stories we have storytellers uh, from different cultures from different landscapes we have breathtaking locations you know be it man made in terms of monuments from the taj mahal and the various beautiful forts and temples and mosques and churches that we have uh, to our geography um, be it the desert be it the mountains be it the hills be it the rivers um it's pulsating you know um india as a location as a destination is pulsating with stories with energy um there is so much of uh, diversity both in terms of our language our culture our cuisine and of course cinema we have a massively diverse cinematic um, um narrative a cinematic culture a cinematic hubs across india we tell stories in so many different languages and i think when you come to india when a filmmaker comes to this inclusive milieu that india is you come to 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 a land that fuels your imagination you come home to your imagination with india it is the it is this backdrop 
that actually made the uh, government of India, uh, the Ministry of Information Broadcasting, open its film facilitation office, which functions like a film commission in the National Film Development Corporation. The NFDC is India's premier developmental institution that develops the film industry, that creates a balanced growth so that the independent sector, so that those new talents, those uh, filmic languages that, or the filmic stories that need to be told get exposure both in the domestic as well as in the international market. But there is also an essence of creating an ease of doing business. And with this, let me digress a little bit. You see, what is happening today is that there's a lot of attention being paid on the demand side of the film industry. Every industry has a supply side and a demand side. The demand side is more glamorous. The demand side is very interesting in the sense that there, are, that there is a beautiful integration of technology, of media, of telecommunication, of content. And therefore, you're seeing it now with the what we called uh, call the over-the-top platforms, the OTT platforms, or the video on demand, which are basically streaming services. So the hot stars, the Netflixes, the Amazons of the world uh, that have come in and completely turned viewing. But there is a supply side to it. And the supply side is, how do you create talent? How do you create content? How does one create ease of doing business? And this is where the government steps in so that the supply side is as strong as the demand side. One of the key essentials of the supply side is the ease of doing business, the ease of filming in India. So therefore, the cinematic landscape, ease of filming, and then you have the film facilitation office that, that enables and empowers the industry to do both in India, situated at NFDC, founded by the Ministry of Information Broadcasting. Keeping this in mind, I want to take you through what we do. So the Film Facilitation Office started operating in January 2016, though it was set up in December of 2015. So we started operating from 2016. And we were primarily meant for international filmmakers who wanted to come in and shoot their feature films, who wanted to shoot their television series, who wanted to shoot their web series in or reality shows on television or the web format in India. Now, once we kind of enabled, we created this ecosystem, this ecosystem that eases filming, that ecosystem that unlocks the creative narrative for Indian cinema, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, I'm sorry, I'll just, this is so um, just to tell you that uh, we, we've kind of, uh, I'm sorry, there's a call coming in from my parents. Uh, you'll have to forgive me for that. Uh, um, yeah. That's my mother was trying to call me. Um, so sorry for that interruption. Yes, um, please. But, but there is a, you know, so we were set up to unlock this narrative. We were set up to uh, kind of enable this entire, no, I need this. So uh, the thing is that the diverse locations, the vast ecosphere of filmmaking that is there in our country, uh, it allows for, uh, it, it, it kind of allows for a lot of things for international filmmakers. It, 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 it allows for filmmakers to come in and tamp the vast ecosphere of filming that we have in this country. It allows them to take advantage of uh, the cost arbitrage. You see, an international filmmaker, when he comes to shoot in India, the dollar rupee exchange rate or the euro rupee exchange rate is such that, the, um, that there's a cost arbitrage. And that allows more services, more utilization of services for the one dollar that you spend. And that's an advantage, actually, to uh, the Indian film sector. Now, I talked about the resources, post-production, animation, VFX, be it sound, be it editing, be it cinematography. India has a huge filmic resource. And this filmic resource 
uh, is across is across the continent, across the subcontinent. If you look at the four industries in the south, the Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, and the Kannada industry, they're so well developed. The Bengali industry, which is in Kolkata, the Assamese industry, Manipur has a, uh, has a growing film uh, uh, industry there. You look at Bhojpuri, which is prevalent in Bihar and parts of Uttar Pradesh, the Punjabi film industry, the Gujarati film industry, the Marathi film industry, and of course, the Hindi film industry. So we are not uh, just represented by Bollywood. It is a cinemas of India, and it is this cinemas of India that makes international filmmakers coming in either to collaborate through co-productions or to just film in India so much more interesting, so much more, um, and it, you know, there's an enigma to it. There is an exhilaration to it when you come in and shoot in India. And above all, there's a ready audience. We love watching movies. And what better if we have our own locations in it? So we are a nation of movie lovers, 1 billion admissions. And look at the huge impact that filming in India, the international films have had on the economy, revenue generation, employment, and above all, film tourism. Some of the interesting films uh, that we shot in India from an internet, there are a whole lot of it. Of course, Gandhi comes immediately to mind. Uh, but of course, there are films like Extraction, which is just being released on Netflix. Um, Christopher Nolan's Tenet, which will be going up on screens very soon, shot in Mumbai. Uh, but if you look at some of the others, so there's Viceroy House, there is uh, Victoria and Abdul, Million Dollar Arm, um, A Suitable Boy, uh, which is a BBC short series shot by Mira Nair, A White Tiger, Arvind Dadiga's uh, novel, which is being made into a film, uh, Zero Dark Thirty, Eat, Pray, Love, Mission Impossible, Slum Dog Millionaire, I can carry on. India is, has such a huge amount of, uh, you know, filming infrastructure that it kind of lends itself to this beautiful um, collaboration um, of not only co-productions, which I'll talk a little later, but of, in, of international filmmakers coming and shooting here. But in 2019, we expanded our scope. And uh, <clears throat> this was a direction given by the Ministry of INB that we should now include the domestic film sector. So in 2019, our uh, web portal, which, was, which is www.ffo.gov.in, was launched. And this web portal has enabled to create an online facilitation and clearance mechanism for the government of India. But just to give you a little bit of statistics on the international side, so far from 2016, 118 to 120 odd uh, films and international projects have come in to film in India from across 27 countries. So you can imagine the number of films that India is attracting, and it's continuously growing. Um, we had this unique concept of a film visa. In fact, uh, to ease the coming in of international filmmakers, film visa was created. And this unique film visa has so far enabled a, more than 1,000 crews in the last four years uh, from 2016 onwards to come in and film in India. Again, you can see that there is a very strong effort being made to ease filming in India. But now let me come back to the domestic um, integration that I was talking about. Uh, www.ffo.gov.in, which was launched in partnership with one of India's most iconic film festivals, probably Asia's oldest film festival, again, run by the director of the film festival of which Rizwan Saab uh, was an integral member, was an integral part of the International Film Festival of India, which is which has this beautiful panoramic collection of films. We, we were grateful to tie up with them. And we're grateful to them that they kind of enabled the launch of the Film Facilitation Office's online portal, ffo.gov.in. Um, you, you must go in and check, and you'll find exactly what I'm talking about uh, from uh, from, an, from an imaginative perspective, from a landscape perspective, from a cultural perspective that India has to offer filmmakers across the world. Uh, so this was launched in 2018 in November. And then in 2019, 
we started welcoming online applications from domestic filmmakers. Um, one of the biggest case studies that we can talk about is uh, last year's uh, big, one of the largest uh, blockbusters from uh, you know the Tamil film industry, Bigil, and uh, we supported them in filming out of out of the state of Tamil Nadu, and we are now doing that for a lot of Indian filmmakers. And I would urge uh, filmmakers from India to leverage the film facilitation office in uh, easing their filming and in meeting their filming requirements. Credit is just not for the FFO. The, the FFO would not have done what it has done without the support of the states. As you know, you know India has several state governments and we have union territories, but without them, the, uh, this, this entire mechanism would not be as effective as it is. There are 36 nodal officers across India uh, amongst all the states and union territories. There are 12 uh, nodal officers who are at key central government institutions that play a very important role in, um, in easing filming. So as I was saying, locations become an integral part of the, of the narrative, of the script, of the development of the script. And what happens is that these nodal officers who come from the state or come from that central government in, have integrated with us. Their information is available on our web portal, including their contact details, uh, their addresses, and how you can reach out to them. It is also a matter of fact that they have been enabled to log on to our system and access applications and actually give online permission. So the, so the entire gamut of permitting, the entire gamut of filming, the entire gamut of uh, wanting to shoot in a particular location has now gone digital. And I must um, uh, express my gratitude to the Ministry of Information Broadcasting, to these uh, key stakeholders, central government ministries, be it the Archaeological Survey of India, the railways, the Ministry of External Affairs, the Ministry of Home Affairs, be it the Animal Welfare Board, uh, Ministry of Defense, the uh, Border Security Forces, who've really come out and supported us, and we've created this one uniform window. My, my gratitude on behalf of the entire team at NFDC and the Film Facilitation Office to the state governments who have worked tirelessly with us to create this uniform mechanism. Today, uh, be it a Karnataka, be it a Tamil Nadu, be it uh, a Uttarakhand, be it a Nagaland, be it a Sikkim, be it Assam, be it Maharashtra, be it Madhya Pradesh, be it Jammu Kashmir, have, uh, be it Ladakh, uh, have you know all come together to um, uh, form this ecosystem where filmmaking, uh, both for the domestic filmmaker and for the international filmmaker, has become easier. In this context, I would like to talk about another unique initiative of the government of India, um, which is the Most Film Friendly State Award. And this Most Film Friendly State Award um, recognizes the state governments uh, and their efforts at creating this film friendly ecosystem. It is judged by a very eminent jury of filmmakers and um, very senior professionals from uh, the film industry. Gujarat won it in 2004, 2015, Uttar Pradesh for 2016, uh, Madhya Pradesh for 2017, and Uttarakhand for 2018. Filmic policies that govern not only how you can film and your permissions, but governs incentives. Incentivization of filmmakers at a local level is now gaining momentum. So Uttar Pradesh, Urisha, Uttarakhand, Jharkhand, um, there is Haryana, so many states which have come out with their policies. Um, I apologize if I'm not covering all the states. Um, it's not possible to kind of do it in such a, such a short time. I need hours for that. But it suffices to say that every state is now creating a policy, a concrete policy, which is on their portal, which is transparent, which allows filmmakers to actually leverage shooting and claim subsidies and incentives that are given by these various state governments. Assam has one. Odisha, of course, is uh, the new one. And I'm sure the Madhya Pradesh government will also launch this very soon. Um, 
but you know, let me now talk about how is how has this process evolved? You know, there was a great deal of sensitization. There were workshops. So in this context, I'd like to uh, talk about Film Bazaar, um, which is an NFDC created platform. Uh, this platform is a development platform that enables filmmakers to come and co-produce. There's a huge co-production segment there. But this platform also has created India's first location show. We call it uh, the location show because film offices from all these state governments uh, can actually come in and hold uh, meetings, engagements through special offices that have been created for them and start dialogues with filmmakers. And these dialogues vary from you know, what we could do if you film with us, how we can support you. Um, state governments talk about the various locations. They talk about their policies. And they basically show their desire to collaborate with filmmakers. It's become more and more collaborative. The state is not a sleeping partner. A state is an active partner in the whole process of filming. And, and filmmakers realize that uh, today, and they appreciate that more than anything. We've showcased this whole filming in India internationally. We've participated with um, the Cannes Film Festival, both the physical version and the online version. This year was the virtual Cannes Film Market, where the FFO was, was participant but through, again, various meetings, uh, various discussions, learnings from various film commissions, exchanging notes, etc. We participated in the Berlin Film Market, another very big European film market that, that is a congregation of um, uh, filmmakers from across the world. We went all the way to Hong Kong um, last year uh, to kind of tell our story, uh, where we integrated with the Hong Kong Film Mart to again push the film in India concept. So if the government of India is saying make in India, the Ministry of INB is saying come film in India. We also up the ante um, where uh, you know through our uh, web portal we have been able to create. Uh, a, a repository of information. This information is on locations. This information is on the production services which are available. This information is pertaining to film policies. This information pertains to how you can film in railways, how you can film uh, with um, if you want to film in an airport, you want to film at a railway station, you want to film in a monument. We have integrated with the Archaeological Survey of India. In fact, Bulbulaya 2 was the first film that shot uh, through this integration. What I mean is that you can now apply online at the Film Facilitation Office web portal, ffo.gov.in, and be able to get permissions from the Archaeological Survey of India. We are grateful to them for having done this. We are, very, we are closing in on our integration with the Ministry of Railways. We're closing in on integration with several of these key stakeholder ministries from the central government, again, to ease filming in India, to create a uniform structure. Let me now shift to co-productions. India has 15 to 16 treaties, you know, be it Israel, be it Korea, be it Canada, be it Bangladesh, be it a host of European nations like France, Germany, etc. Where, be it New Zealand, uh, you know, where Indian filmmakers, uh, that is Indian producers, and producers from these 15 countries that have treaties with India can actually collaborate on an Indian language film. Once you collaborate under an official treaty, the Film Facilitation Office of the Ministry of Information Broadcasting plays a key role in this collaboration that it, that it kind of facilitates an official recognition of your film under a particular treaty. This, of course, enables your film uh, to be recognized as a national film, because, it, because once you've done it under a treaty, um, say you've done an India-Canada um, co-production, or what is really happening is the Indian, if France is a very, very popular um, country that, um, that you know, a lot of French filmmakers uh, want to collaborate and have collaborated with Indian filmmakers. The, uh, this collaboration, as I said, creates a global footprint for your film. So <coughs> not just filming in India, 
but also collaborating with filmmakers in India. So today you can tell stories like Sir, which is a Hindi film. It was in Cannes a couple of years back, uh, Journey of an Unknown Fakir. Um, there are The Lunchbox. Uh, there are films like Kissa. Um, these are all under the official co-production treaties. Uh, since 2016, there have been 10 such official recognitions, and the number continues to grow because more and more filmmakers want to come in and film with filmmakers in India. So co-productions is, is something that uh, is a growing trend. And I hope that in that a lot of our filmmakers will take um, you know, more and more proactive measures to create collaborations between them and people from uh, these different countries that I mentioned. Um, there's a, a formulation of, uh, you know, for domestic filmmakers as well as in as international filmmakers who come to film in India, uh, there is a uh, formulation of incentives which is being worked out by the Ministry of Information Broadcasting. Um, formulation of incentives for international films, TV series, web series uh, that come in to India to film, and uh, for uh, domestic filmmakers who wish to collaborate with filmmakers from any of these 15 countries. When I say filmmakers, I, ex I also include producers in it. So two producers uh, from, or say one producer from India and one producer from France or from Germany um, or any of these 15 countries that India is, uh, that, uh, is entering into an official co-production will also be benefited by this incentive. So therefore, you see that it is not just a creative filmic journey, but it is a very important economic journey too. Um, more employment, um, film-induced tourism. You have to understand that filming in a particular location enriches your economy. It, it is a huge contributor to the GDP. And that is what makes uh, the, the, the film industry or the film sector a very important, a very integral part of India's soft power. It, it positions the soft power of India. It positions the dynamic culture. It positions the strength of the, of the, film, of the resources, be it human or filmic resources, that exist in India. So therefore, uh, we feel uh, at the Film Facilitation Office that more and more, we're able to kind of create employment. We're able to position India as a preferred filming destination. A little example of Christopher Nolan's film, Tenet, which shot in, which shot in India recently. <coughs> it's a major, film, major feature film produced by Warner Brothers, uh, the leading Hollywood studio. Film visa was issued to over 160 foreign uh, crew members who came from different parts of the world to shoot here. They shot um, across Mumbai and the success wouldn't have been possible without the integration of the state government of Maharashtra and the Ministry of Information Broadcasting, the Film Facilitation Office, all coming together to work uniformly to enable this film to happen. Uh, the film cast four Indian actors, including um, one of India's most acclaimed actors, Dimple uh, Tupadiyaji. Uh, besides that, it had approximately 600 Indian crew, 2,000 supporting cast. You can imagine the infrastructure that was used in terms of uh, be it generator vans, be it um, you know people serving on the set, be it the food, the catering, be it the hotel stay, be it um, just employment, direct and indirect employment. So you can imagine a, so much amount of economic contribution. Leave alone the filmic contribution, leave alone the cultural component. But there's so much of economic activity that contributes to the GDP or to the growth and the economic development of a particular state. And hence, the uh, filming in India, the, the easier it becomes, the more sustainable the growth of the economy becomes. Because more and more filmmakers come in and they want to kind of contribute they want to partner, they want to tell 
stories set in India capture the richness, the the aroma. India has a certain flavor, a certain aroma, which which uh, a certain essence that must be captured and that is captured by this one. Biggest, be it television, be it on the web, be it on the large screen. Um, I think I have been able to um, capture the essence of filming in India. I hope I've been able to capture the essence of what it has taken for the government to create this ecosystem of nodal officers, of integration with the state governments, integration with key stakeholder, central government. You must understand that, that the government becomes a key player in filming through locations, through permitting, through processes, through creating an SOP, through filmic policies. And I hope that when you next time when you're when you're watching a film um, with your friends and family, uh, you will think of the film facilitation office as also being there. You may not see us, you may not see the government of these different states, or you may not see uh, the officials of the <coughs> archaeological survey of India there, or the railways, or the animal welfare board, or you know uh, so many missionaries that own jurisdictions across India. But I'm sure you will get to know that behind the scenes, the state machinery is as important and playing as a critical role so that that enter entertainment, that film that you're watching, comes out and lights up screens. That's what we do. I'm open to questions. Uh, I'm very happy to take any suggestions, any inputs, any questions that you may have. Uh, uh, Rezwan Saab, uh, I leave it to you. I hope you so much. I hope Thank it Thank you so much, uh, Vikram Jiji, for such an enriching talk. Uh, and then many of us, you know, we don't know what Film Facilitation Office is doing. You people are doing wonderful work and such a huge platform you have, you know, which has changed the, you know, sort of uh, uh, film permissions and, you know, and the film shooting scenario in the country after uh, you have taken over this, you know, office, very important office of the Ministry of INB. Uh, uh, I, I'm sure, you know, audience uh, have enriched uh, uh, with your talk today and uh, you have made, you know, very, very interesting uh, sort of uh, insights you have given about the, you know, how FFO work basically and how you can make your applications. Uh, you know, a couple of days back, I was discussing this uh, topic with, you know, some young filmmakers in Hyderabad. So they had very interesting questions uh, to me. I said, okay, okay <laughs> Mr. Vikramjit will be joining us on Sunday. So maybe I'll, I'll put forward your uh, questions to him. So uh, they, you know, they, their basic question was, you know, while they, for example, they are shooting in say Himachal Pradesh. Mm -hmm. So they apply through the FFO, uh, they, they make their application, online application. And they asked me, you know, for, in how many days they received first response from the FFA? Okay, your film permissions have been cleared. So that was the okay. first. <laughs> right. So this one, sir, what happens is we have an automatic emailing system. The moment you come to our site and if you register. So just like you go to passport or you go to the income tax site and up with, you get a dashboard. Right. So once you get a dashboard, you're able to create your own profile. And once you register creating your profile, your email ID, your mobile number is, of course, captured. So once you've registered, you get an automatic email that says, welcome, Mr. Rizwan. You are now registered with successfully with the FFO. Now you create, now you're given your permission and you fill in uh, the sheet or the form that uh, enlists all the permission that you require, different locations, what are your requirements, etc. Moment that is sent to a nodal officer. Say you want to shoot in Bing, uh, say you want to shoot in Maharashtra, you want to shoot in Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, you want to shoot in a monument, and you want to shoot in a railway station. So moment you write that sheet, moment you fill in that form, it will automatically go to these five gentlemen. Okay. So the five nodal of officers will be automatically informed that there is an application. And they want the applicant wants permission from you. For international filmmakers, we normally take three weeks to give the first international permission, which is the national permission. Mm -hmm. After that, the international filmmaker, like the domestic filmmaker, has to seek local permission. So we keep you posted online as well as offline. 
<coughs> on an immediate basis. So you will know when you've registered, you will know that your application is going out. You will also know that it is work and work in progress. <coughs> we normally see that while the states have their own ecosystem of granting permissions and their own timelines, but it doesn't take very long. I mean, at a max, probably two to three weeks. You know, but turnaround is very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, all the state, unless you are shooting in a destination where there is security concerns or it is a restricted area, then it takes time. It takes its due course because it has to go through a very separate mechanism. So it's a very so user friendly. So to, to all young filmmakers, yes. I think you have very well clarified this is a very user friendly portal uh, wherein, yes. you know, if you are sort of being connected with a single point contact of a state government, you know, nothing can be better than that. So, yes. you know, after applying to the FFO uh, portal, then you are directly connected to a state government uh, sort of nodal right. officer who takes right. care of, you know, all, all permission. Correct. Correct. So, in this, I want to also, uh, sorry, I just want to clarify that <laughs> to apply to the state government, it is not mandatory that you have to come through us. It is not mandatory. So say Mr. Rizwan Ahmed goes to the state of Maharashtra directly. He goes to the state of Uttarakhand directly. And he goes to the state of Bihar directly. Right. In all these three cases, he can come and write an email to us saying, look, this is what I've done. We will still help him or her. Okay. So we will facilitate. Whenever you come to us, we will facilitate you. And then we will tell you, look, you could have come online. OK, next film, you come online. This film, you've already started your process. But it doesn't mean that we will not stand with that filmmaker. Great. And you will also find that the nodal officers are extremely supportive. So we're all in one-on-one. -on -one. So it's not that you know if you don't come through our system, we will not help you out. No, it's not like that. It is not mandatory. Up states go directly, but you can also come through us through our online mechanism. We'll help you irrespective. So very easy workflow for all you know young filmmakers and you know all eminent filmmakers who really want to shoot different locations uh, all across India. And uh, uh, there was one more question from these you know young filmmakers. Uh, they were inquiring. Uh, your website carries you know a lot of uh, detailed directory of the you know technicians, producers, line producers, etc. So if they want to register on your sort of uh, you know your FFO website, so how they can approach you? Okay, so is there any criteria uh, experience required, or you know, have you set up yeah, any criteria for yeah. the registration? Yes, we have. We have. So, if you're a line producer, uh, then of course you would have had to do at least two to three uh, international films, because when people are coming in to connect with you, they must know that you have actually done international film, because that um, you know also enlifts and um, uh, uplifts the quality of people who you want to deal with. And it shows India in a good side. For filmmakers as such, if you mean by directors, no, we don't uh, have uh, a listing of all the directors. However, we have a listing of the director's association. So mm -hmm. if for any young director who wishes to uh, kind of come to us and say, look, can you help me list myself? Or can you help me position myself? We will connect him to the director's association of India. And he or she has to fulfill that criteria. There are production service companies who we have listed on our site. We will be doing another call, um, maybe not immediately, maybe later. And when we do that, our enlistment criteria would be given that they would have to be active and they would have to actually produce and show us proof that they have produced quality stuff so that you know when they are listed there, collaboration becomes that much more uh, better and that much more efficient so that the name of India as having filmic resources but qualitative filmic resources is established. But but we're definitely willing to help any filmmaker who comes to us for any guidance, um, who wishes to connect with us for any support. Great. So I have one more question, last question of, of those you know group who, who are asking these questions to me. Uh, they they had they, they they had very interesting query uh, to me. You know, we already know the popular locations all across India. You know, which are being used constantly in different sort of cinemas actually. 
So is there any provision on FOFO website wherein you know you keep on adding new locations, you know, uh, with, with different state governments? For example, uh, UP or Uttarakhand has introduced a new location uh, which, which may sort of define, you know, sort of uh, very very interesting uh, uh, shooting uh, permissions uh, for for different uh, genres of film filmmaking. So do you have right. any provision of adding new locations to FOFO? And how how this information goes to the different filmmakers actually? Okay. Wonderful. I mean, I, 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 uh, I think this is a very, very good question that you asked. Um, if you go to the FFO site, uh, first I'll pick the word genre that you used. Um, if you go to our FFO site, you will find that uh, every location, as you open the portal, every location has something written on it. So it's either adventure, romance, drama. So every location mirrors a certain genre or genre uh, of cinema. So it's very important that locations uh, data uh, is up updated by the state government. I told you that um, I, I mentioned that the uh, state government nodal officers have, have been empowered because each one of them is listed on our site. Mm -hmm. They also have their own login IDs and passwords. So in UP, uh, be it Tibet, be it Sikkim, be it Mizoram, be it Bengal, be it Karnataka, be it Tamil Nadu, any state, be it Goa, be it Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, they all can actually update their latest information on uh, locations, on policies, on SOPs, guidelines themselves. They're completely empowered to do that. In fact, we encourage them to do that including festivals, because a filmmaker may also want to capture a festival. Like, you know, Kumbh Mela, of course, comes in mind. But if you look at Nagaland's Hornbill Festival, such a beautiful, fascinating festival that allows you to go in and film something or set a story. So all um, states are enabled and empowered to fill in their own data, not just of locations, but of festivals, of policies. It could be a new incentive. So the Odisha government will will yeah, fill in their um, incentives that they're offering. So this enables the filmmaker to actually keep himself updated. We're also going to be starting very soon a burst of emails to these trade associations, mm -hmm. where we will also inform them to tell their members. And maybe it's a good idea that through NFDC, we can take this to also you know, uh, filmmakers on the ground or filmmakers who are associated with institutions. Uh, so I think it's a great idea. I'm going to keep this in mind. And if certain suggestions that you have can be penned down, uh, because our journey is purely evolving. You know, we were a startup in 2016 of January. We have now reached a certain stage. And for us, uh, suggestions are always a way forward to betterment. Um, and they're all taken very positively and implemented. So this is a lovely idea. We will probably tie in with institutions and say, OK, look, this is what we have new. We have to create some kind of dissemination of information on that uh, to take it to the next level. But yeah. uh, but um, states are empowered, you know. To, that. Uh, a couple of days, like, I had a very interesting discussions with, you know, film friends here in Hyderabad. Uh, uh, they, they believe your website like anything, you know, F of a website. They say, you know, everything is authenticated there. You Whatever right. is there on the F of a website, you know, they believe it a lot. And they were looking at the directory also. They particularly discuss it directly, like you know, the line producers they are in our other then other technical crew as well, mm -hmm. also. Yes. But there was a very pertinent question from their side, you know. Now filmmaking is sort of can be divided into so many areas, you know. You have yes. sort of line producers, producers, executive producers, you know, sound department has a lot of technicians, sound recorders, you know, and then the gaffers and light the lighting technicians and then cinematographer, mm -hmm. cinematographer, you know, so many areas. So they are expecting, you know, if all these areas directory can be created on the F of a website, because then these guys, they won't go to, you know, any other source for the information. They will find, you know, every information on a very authenticated website. So this was, this one one I thought this I'll share. I, I mean, uh, this is one of our initiatives that we need to do. This is one of our initiatives that we are planning. We are planning to create two things, a location bank, which right. will continuously get um, uh, updated. You know, people talk about, and I'm coming to your point, uh, people talk about the seven wonders. I think in India, we have multiple wonders Absolutely. across all the state governments. So we're creating a location data bank. Our current location will give you weather. 
will give you temperature, will give you uh, nearest airport, etc. Hotels will give you uh, road connectivity, all the other logistical information. Similarly, for resources, we want to create a massive data bank. See, what India doesn't have so far or didn't have is even knowing who to go to if I want to film. Should I go to tourism department? Should I go to public relations department? Should I go to police? So we're putting all this down. The next big step is to get all this information. And hopefully our film associations, you know, we have multiple film associations across India. So we will connect with them. It will take, it will be time consuming. But yes, it is a definite goal to go there and have um, a list of all such people and facilities in one location. That is an ambition that we have. I'm, I can't give you a date saying hum kal tak kar denge, but I can definitely say this that this is uh, something which is on our radar. Oh, I'm sure. to, because it's so big, our industry is so enormous that I have to capture even somebody who's making a film in Punjabi to who's making a film in Manipur to who's making a film in Maharashtra to who's making a film down south. And it's not one in this case. So, but yes, that ambition and that desire is there. Uh, we want to update this resource database. We want to create a concrete resource database. I'm sure. I'm sure filmmaking is going to be a great experience soon under your leadership, definitely. And FOF is doing great job, and you'll keep on doing good job. I'm sure about that. Uh, now, because we already crossed now 45 minutes, so I'll take the audience question now. Uh, the first question comes from S. Venkat Ramani. He says the concept of awards for most film friendly state has been interesting. What does your office do in terms of encouraging states to come forward in the lines to lines of, say, Uttarakhand 2019? Uh, so what we do is we ensure that the first of all, let's understand the parameters of most film friendly state. They're very simple. Do you have a film office? Do you have a film cell where a filmmaker can call? If so, does it answer your calls regularly? Do you have a website, etc., offline, online uh, kind of mechanism? Do you market your state? What kind of policies do you have? Do you encourage filmmaking? So these are the criteria. Then we have an eminent jury. This jury comprises of filmmakers. It comprises of producers. It comprises of various people from the film fraternity including government officials you know who are in who, are, who engage with the film fraternity and they just like the national awards a process that you've been through they evaluate all the state governments and their policies and they have frank discussions within them to say okay this state qualifies this state doesn't what we do is we we have this conversation throughout the year where we keep telling our colleagues in the state government that look Please participate. It will only enrich and uplift the game. You know, it will be like a game changer. So all the states take active participation in it. They're very enthusiastic about it, including, you know, the states that have won previously. They're as enthusiastic and as hungry to go out there and say, no, we're still the best, you know. Mm -hmm. And for the states that haven't, they put in a lot of extra work. So there's a huge amount of enthusiasm and a huge amount of positivity from all the states. And uh, we continuously keep updating them with information, saying, please send information on festivals. If you have film festivals, how you support that. So we would showcase it to the jury on your behalf. You know, We don't want there to be any loss in translation. We are proud of what the states are doing. So we want to be as inclusive as ever. True that, true that. I'm sure, Venkat Ramini, your question is well answered. Uh, now we have another sort of uh, is a comment now from Anidhya Datta. He says, uh, uh, this is a fascinating talk. The FOFA is doing amazing work, clearly. Well done, Vikramjit and team in making this happen. So it's a word of appreciation from mm -hmm. Anindya Datta. Uh, then thank, you, Anindya Datta. thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that comment. Uh, we will hope to strive more. And uh, thank you for your encouragement. Great. So we have another comment sort of uh, from Amjad Ali. He says, visibility needs to be paid attention to. So he's asking you know, for promotion of yes. the different locations. Okay. Yeah, taken. We, we, we take cognizance of that fact. We've been, um, as I said, you know, uh, our visibility has uh, is slightly has, you know, kept evolving because we've also wanted 
the ground beneath our feet to be firm it shouldn't be ki humne band baja baja you know we've kind of gone out and promoted ourselves but our ecosystem has not been done so therefore visibility is evolving as we evolve so that when we are visible and when we go on a marketing drive we are actually able to deliver what we are saying we will deliver so yes you will see more visibility as the ground beneath our feet keeps getting stronger and stronger and we are evolving to that so we have you know another question from anindya datta uh, she says uh, which states have been the most welcoming of the ffos efforts and which states would you like to work more with as far as domestic films are concerned okay this is a very interesting question i think if you look at um you know the whole paradigm um, has changed has shifted uh for becoming not only for welcoming filmmakers and filmmakers are now treated as investors so like you would want um a state of uttar pradesh which which says you know come in and invest in factories come in and invest in making cars come in and invest in uh, you know building infrastructure filmmakers come and invest too so the paradigm has shifted even a lakshadweep today says that look we want to welcome filmmakers we want to treat them as investors so i think all the states uh, beat in odisha <coughs> maharashtra madhya pradesh chatisgarh that jharkhand they're all looking at filmmakers and investors <coughs> i would say that all the states by and large are very very welcoming rajasthan of course is a natural choice uh, for international filmmakers to come in it's a huge iconic tourist destination so is kerala down south so is bengal so is manipur so is the, the northeast has suddenly come alive you know they have come alive with this integration and we have done workshops there they are so welcoming sikkim we did a fascinating workshop there nagaland they have their own festivals so i think each state is coming alive in their own way and saying that we want to welcome you so if an uttarakhand officer is eagerly there so is gujarat you know moment we send out an email saying this filmmaker looking for a destination they are all actively eager to say no it should be us who should be there karnataka all you know we have a we have a whatsapp group of our nodal officers and to answer on in those question uh, to give it a little interesting um, aspect there is so much of exchange of information like the post covid or in covid shooting um, uh, guidelines there is so much of uh, energy which is there in this whatsapp group people exchanging ideas people wanting to know what are international filmmakers uh, or what are international countries doing can you share that with us this is what we have done so madhya pradesh is exchanging ideas with karnataka um sikkim is sending their information goa says this is what we have done so there's a huge amount of uh, uh, robustness and uh, effectiveness and uh, energy that is there so i wouldn't want to single out any state but i would certainly like to say that, that there has been an enormous paradigm shift i think this is the new narrative for india the ease of doing overall uh, ease of doing business and i think it is a it is a completely new narrative that we are seeing true that and i can I only thank the government of india for this absolutely absolutely this question is well so i think we are now touching uh, almost one hour so i'll take you know last question of the show today uh, this question is from cg sri gua he is a basically filmmaker and film teacher as well he is from fti pune uh, he, he says you know good morning rizwan ji and vikram ji ji the great work that you at ffo are doing is really praise worthy unfortunately this department's work is still not known to many i include myself till today can i suggest that you conduct a series of contact program maybe a lecture in all institutions teaching filmmaking mass communication institutes and uh, other institutes as well you can start with institutes like fti srfti rdf institute etc um uh, suggestion very well taken in fact uh, sir when uh, rizwan ji uh, approached uh, the ffo i think we were only too delighted to do this and spread the word your uh, points absolutely taken um, i we would love to integrate with the fti and the sr fti and all other institutions uh, because the fti and the sr fti are part of the ministry um, we would immediately want to do this and uh, very happy for your suggestion on how to take this forward with the fti sr fti and rizwan saab if there are any other institutions that you know 
that 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 we can reach out to um, your input on the resource data bank your input on the location data bank um, is absolutely taken uh, 100% it will be implemented i assure you that and maybe the next talk i can actually tell you the look this is what we have done we are open to complete suggestions there is an email called ffo at nfdcindia.com ffo at nfdcindia.com you can write in you will get a response and not only that we will take your suggestions as solutions and work on it so we are absolutely open um, you know we feel that we don't have all the answers um, if there are ways and suggestions given to us we will only work towards betterment surely we will be happy to continue. that is the new narrative of india absolutely absolutely and you know with this suggestion of shri guha uh, the, the uh, very senior faculty member from you know ji uh, sujatha she says you know good morning vikram ji ji and rizwan ji this is sujatha senior faculty department of mass communication journalism ams college hyderabad so people have started started joining actually on the suggestion of sir so we do sort see. of you know conduct a lecture series all across india <laughs> sir it is still 56 minutes can we do another 4 minutes uh, and then we just can. make it 60 if possible we can do it we can do it okay thank you thank you rizwan sahab um, you know uh, rizwan sahab what has happened is that um, as we are evolving um, as i said it's it's a complete journey you never you never reach 100% so every time you think you reach 100% and you will like oh my god i have actually got to go another 100% so it continuously evolves we have learned uh, from the uh, we are members of the association of film commissioners internationally we are learning from our colleagues in norway we are learning from our colleagues in denmark from japan on what their best practices are and we are trying to see how we can implement them some as i would be honest to say that you know we not we we may fa face success in some area we face constraints in some area but again as i said you know it it's it, it continuously evolves the system continuously evolves today um, hopefully when the incentives will be announced our joint secretary madam uh, mrs tc kalyani who's also the managing director of nfdc uh, continuously empowers us and gives us a very good sense of direction in terms of what is to be done in terms of how uh, we can leverage both the industry connectivity and the government connectivity and you know build this bridge so um, we take part in various uh, uh, seminars like uh, on conferences like the fiki frames the ones with the cii um then various location shows where we are there and we do interactions so there's continuously a lot of learning that happens and i'm very happy if you can introduce us to few um of these colleges and institutions uh, and you know where we can take this forward that will be a vision uh thank you so much vikram ji ji for such an enriching talk today and you know this cannot be better than this you know a person like you uh, informing on fop and government policies Uh, i'm sure you know audience have enriched a lot and when they have not seen you know this this sort of talk on this particular topic many of us we are unaware of the ff of upwards you know how the film shootings are facilitated in india so this talk is going to be you know part of our archive and you know much 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 you know audience is going to benefit from this talk in future as well so uh, thank you so much once again joining us today it has been really a wonderful experience today joining you Thank you so much, Rizal. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Having honor having you today on this show. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank so, you. audience, only this much for today's show. Uh, on Saturday, we'll be joining with yet another personality uh, at 11:30 a.m. sharp. So, I request you to joining on coming Saturday at 11:30. Uh, we'll be sort of uh, promoting the creative from tomorrow onwards. So, kindly keep watching uh, IMC Manu AB channel. Uh, we'll be informing the next personality tomorrow morning around 11 o'clock. Uh, so till then, uh, take good care of you. Stay home. Stay safe. Thank you so much for joining us today. Very good day today.